Well, we and can... we're starting off the broadcast with wrestling. <laughs> can, we just, can we just say that we don't coach in the singlet itself? Yeah, I, know. I like how you have to point that out. I understand that. Yeah, I know. That's funny, though. Oh, fuck, what kind of fucking coat is that? Nine B A seven and nine D. I'm seeing something. So it looks like oh all right, I'm back. My God. Look at her butt. But. Oh my god. Look at look at her, her butt. But. Okay. Oh. We ready, guys? Yep. Are you ready, kids? Oh, are you ready, kids? Aye, aye, Captain. I, I can hear you. you. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> uh, recording on one, two, three. One, two, three. Woo! -hoo. That's we have talk about started, boy. Yeah. All right, and I was just checking or testing the mark. Markiplier. <laughs> All right, let God me pull up my Dax. Hang on one second. Okay, keep recording. You're fine. Keep it, keep it, rah, rah, keep it, keep it low. So keep now it, I wonder rah, if, like, after I'm done recording, if I can just skip to the next mark, skip to the rather than having to look for the next mark. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So I'm, oh, I'm so, ex I'm so excited. I mean. Google, Google, you freaking bastard. Like the things you will find amongst the Googles. Cause I was actually trying to Google the same app that I had so that I could show it to coach. And then it just happened to like, somebody was asking it on a forum. Like, how do you mark on audacity? And I'm like, oh, yes. <laughs> you would think they would have that in there anyway, just because of, Right. Yeah. So, I mean, it was just something that happened to be buried. Like, even if I went to like all the, you know, edit, select, view, like I've checked through all that stuff before. And it just happens to be this, something that they don't necessarily, you know, advertise. But you happen to be one of those in the know people. Mm -hmm. and it, in the new. <sighs> you know what song I have stuck in my head? What? Um, Thinking you could live without me. Thinking you could live without me. I like Halsey. Yeah. You know, uh, I don't know if I told you this, but uh, me and Hills were trying to figure out what we we're going to give each other for Valentine's Day. And so I sent her a link to a new keyboard just because I, I kind of want to get a Chroma keyboard. Um. And it's a new Razer keyboard. And I told her, I was like, hey, another benefit to it is it's actually a little bit quiet, quieter than mine. <laughs> Not by much, but it is. How would you know? What do you mean? How would you know it's quieter? Because all the reviews I watch oh. for it, they do a sound <laughs> test on them. Gotcha. <laughs> and they sound specifically You're different. You're such a these. dork. <laughs> well, of course I'm going to look at review videos. <laughs> Oh uh, jeez, but it's a keyboard for fuck's sake. I mean, well, so so the, the reason why I was looking at reviews is because there are two different ones. There's their premium, which is called the Huntsman Elite, and then there's uh Black Widow Elite, and there's like a forty dollar difference in between them. Mm -hmm. And the difference is, um, Razer. Do you know anything about mechanical keyboard switches? Yes. Okay. Do you really, or are you just saying that to be a part of the conversation? Yes. <laughs> okay. So Razer has it that are in these, they're Razer green switches. And uh, the new, like the premium one has these brand new switches that are supposed to be faster and they sound different. And so I was looking, I was like, is there really, is that really worth the price difference? Gotcha. And so that's what I was looking for. But also I just like watching tech review videos. Cause you're a dork. I am a dork. I know. All right, I'll be right back. I want to turn my fan down so it doesn't show up so much on the microphone. Oh, 
So I was Coach, just, come back while I was gone. Not yet. So I was I was just looking, and apparently, if I buy Far Cry Digital, I don't have my like twenty percent off. What? But I, now, what twenty percent are you talking about? So when you have Gamers Club unlocked, um, you get automatic twenty percent off any game purchase, um, and also. If you pre-order it, you get another ten dollars, basically. So, um, so like for example, Far Cry New Dawn is uh, thirty-nine ninety-nine. I, if I buy it physically, I can get it for thirty-one. Okay. Twenty percent of thirty-nine is eight bucks. So, um, I can do that. Right. Um, but I also have like a twenty-dollar coupon that I, I just, it's just a Best Buy thing, so I could use that towards the digital. Mm-hmm. So I don't know what I want to do because I don't want to do like I did with Kingdom, uh, Kingdom Hearts, and wait until the middle of the day when it came out. So I mean, I don't know if this would help you, but like, um, if we game share, then it's like I could take care of a part of it too, and so it makes it even cheaper. Like if if the combination of your discount and your coupon. You know, so does game share have to be bought from PlayStation or? Well, yeah, it's digital, dude. Oh, that's a good point because this is just a digital code that I'll put into the. Okay. Well, right. And I mean, even then, I could still give you it through PayPal or Vino or whatever the fuck that new thing is. Venmo. Be careful Venmo. with Venmo because they had some security concerns recently. See, and that's what I was telling coach, but he says he's been using it for a whole year for wrestling. So, well, so, so basically it, it was just a recent thing where people's like information and stuff was getting leaked out. So the fix to it is to set all your stuff to private. Cause, oh, well, yeah, all, cause so. de- well, yeah, cause default, you can, you can have everyone see who you sent money to and for what, mm, but if you gotcha. set it to default, you can only see between you and the payer or you and the buyer. Gotcha. All right. I'll make sure. I I mean, we haven't done anything on it yet. So, I mean, I'll make sure to go in and change that. Either way, my point is, is that, you know, if I pay half and all your discounts almost lead up to half, then you, there's almost no money out of your pocket. (laughs) Right. Right. So just, just a thought, because we were going to do that for division two anyways. So yeah, that would make sense. Cause it's, cause that way you wouldn't have to rent it either. Yeah. Exactly. I could. Yeah. Well, this one is the digital deluxe edition, which comes with like bonus stuff. And yeah. It's like 49. So, yeah. 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 So we'll see. Yeah. Why not? Yeah. All right. Ready All right let's get started. We ready? Yeah. Okay. You're down with the sickness. Jesus Christ. Got my sickness in my pants. Well, all right. Hey, everybody, and welcome back to Nerd to the Third, your stop for video games, movies, and nerd culture. Today, we're bringing you the Power Three with your host, Nick, Nate, and my friends call me Coach. Woohoo! Gonna do some wrestling. Wrestling? wrestling? <laughs> <laughs> if you're watching um, the pre show, you get that joke. <laughs> yeah, right. So just another reason to make sure to get yourself over to YouTube at ThreadX3 Productions. We have the video version of this and it's raw and uncut, just like your mom. I would say like me, but I am Catholic. So no. <laughs> is that right? Is it the right, don't you you Jewish, Jewish, right? a couple of times, huh? No. Hmm. Um and definitely been put in raw. 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 Going in raw. 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 Oh, I know. I got with you. Body. Yeah. He. Body. <laughs> yeah. Body. Yeah. Ha, Thank, you. Ha. Thank you for repeating exactly what I did. You're welcome. So a little bit of grinding coach. I mean, you're a part of the team, but you can still let people know where to find you. You can follow me on Twitter at Coach Smitty24.
We lost him. Coach Smitty at 20. <laughs> yeah, that's what it is, I think. Oh, you just stopped talking. I thought we lost you. <laughs> I was very confused. Thank you very much. Yeah, that's the Twitter handle, Coach Smitty24. And then uh, you can also email me through the Movie Fix uh, podcast email at moviefixpod at gmail. Now, what is that Movie Fix? Movie Fix is the brand new ThreadX3 production show where it is hosted by yours truly, where we basically just get together and we talk about movie stuff. Um, and sometimes we'll dive into some more obscure films. Uh, definitely when Oscars come around, as I start watching all the Oscars movies, I'll start giving individual reviews of those. Uh, we actually recorded the first episode last week, but we had a couple of technical difficulties, but that should be rectified here pretty soon. All so right. be sure to give that a, to check that out. All I, right. love, I love all the plugs. This is a plug filled episode, yeah. just like your mom. Hey, <laughs> all righty. And um, you can always find Nate at uh, at six, six, 17 on Twitter. That's S Y C S T I X 17 on Twitter. And if you want to send me an email for whatever reason, I'm not going to give you that information because I'm not going to give you my private email, <laughs> but you can go <laughs> watch my very old, my really, really old YouTube channel where I did like three unboxing videos if you want. And that's just six sticks. S Y C S T I X. Yep. I don't know if any of you have ever seen that. That's like old, old. Yeah. Um, and then obviously Thread X3 is TX3 Productions on Twitter, Thread X3 Productions on YouTube. And if you just add at gmail.com at the end of that, that is our email, Thread X3 Productions at gmail.com. So let's head into our very first segment of the day. It came from the interweb. Every All time right, you. So, oh, fucker. <laughs> Every time you do that, I think about that gopher, that really dramatic gopher when it turns around. It's like, dun, dun, dun. <laughs> all right. <laughs> um, all right. So on today's It Came From The Enderweb um, is going to be a little bit more video game focused. And, you know, I try to keep it general. regular like a diet. Yeah. Um, but today we have to talk about the Metro exclusive exclusivity exclusivity on epic so it's going to be exclusive on epic and this has gotten a lot of people mad and so i'd like to talk specifically about the people um and uh review bombs thoughts on it being exclusive especially since it's on the pc and the moral part about announcing it um right after ads have already been running on steam so let's start with the the general which is it's exclusive on epic like what are your thoughts on it you guys have a pc you guys game on your pc i am almost exclusive well i am i'm exclusive on the playstation 4 so this doesn't really speak to me that much so i definitely want to hear your guys's input uh, um, first coach. i mean i really don't know what the big bugaboo is about i mean it's, it's not like they said oh if you pre-ordered on steam you're not able to use steam yeah. Um, so they still, if they already pre-ordered it, they get it. Um, and I would think with a game like Metro, if you haven't already pre-ordered it, you're probably not going to pre-order. Um, yeah. Because the game comes out in like two weeks. So exactly. Yeah. Right. I would think, you know, I guess they announced it technically last week, so I guess it'll be three weeks from the time of the announcement. But I wouldn't. But I don't really get the bugaboo about it. I mean, it's basically like a game saying, "Hey, we're not going to be at Best Buy. We're going to be at only Walmart and Target and GameStop." You know, yeah. just go to the other store, you know. Mm -hmm. So there is actually a lot to unpack here. Um, yeah, definitely. If you guys, if you guys, you know, anyone listening or anyone here, listen to the uh, kind of funny games daily um, episodes about this when they were talking about it. Um, they had a lot of different parts to a lot of different things that they discussed. So one of them is just to clarify, because they did come out with this. I don't know if you guys saw this, but it is going to be a timed exclusive. Yeah, it's going to be a year, right? Yeah, it's going to be a year. But at the same time, a point that they had was uh, after a year, who's going to be buying the game? I mean, people do, but right, like, right. the reason why this is a big deal to most people is just because, you know, on the release. Now, the way I look at it from, from the use that I have, if this was 
a if this was like for example it's going to be a playstation exclusive a time exclusive not like not on xbox right away then we're looking at a rise of the tomb raider situation right this is kind of a little bit different uh simply because it's like coach that a great example um pc you have access to so many launchers so many stores if it's not on steam go download the epic launcher and and go play it there you know if 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 it was that hey we pre-ordered it on steam we're not going to get it then that would be different um yeah but also it's one of those things that i look at this in in a positive light i don't think this is something that's necessarily bad because uh friend mirabella one of the things he was saying was um or jerry petty i don't remember but epic is running right out of the gate they're launching this brand new thing they're trying to take a part of the part of the um uh marketplace Mm -hmm. to do that they have to give people a reason why epic store is the place to go right now one thing that i've been seeing a lot especially on reddit that i think is kind of unfair is people talking about how like why would you use the epic store when the steam store has so many features well that's an apples and oranges comparison steam's been around for 10 years at this point even maybe longer yeah, that's um, probably 15 or more. 15 years. So for 15 years, they've been able to add all these cool features, you know, forum support, review support, chat, yeah. trophies. Epic Store came out three to six months ago. No, mm-hmm. it was about six months ago. It came, about, came out around the time of V3. Not even a year. So it's not really fair to criticize the Epic Store simply because they don't have these features what's because they're brand new they're trying to build a marketplace or trying to build a place for people to go to and doing moves like this gives them a reason to do that um and so counterpoint there if a console came out and i don't know made you i don't know do all your messages through your phone rather than on the console itself wouldn't that be a reason to be mad well, isn't right. that what Nintendo did? I well, mean, that one, I mean, <laughs> thank yeah, you. But also, <laughs> it's kind of similar to, um, in a way, uh, PS3 and Xbox 360. If you mm-hmm. remember back in the day when the PlayStation Network system launched, you did it on a fucking web browser. Oh yeah, like that's how you managed the the store, and that's how you got around pages you needed to go. And it took them years to actually build a store in the system instead of having you just go on a web browser so it's it's one of those things that i get that and i understand that but also it's a time thing like people are seriously genuinely criticizing the epic store and trying to make but the way i look at it is is i look at it economically competition always ends up being better for the consumer Right. For Steam for, like we said, about 15, well, not 15 years because the first few were really, really rocky. Steam has basically cornered this market and been the one store. It's kind of like Disney. Disney's getting to the point where they own everything. In 10 mm-hmm. years, you could see, I could easily see a monopoly with Disney owning absolutely everything. So what the Epic Store d- is doing is very interesting. And I think that this is going to be such a benefit for developers simply because of their revenue split. And yes. because of that, maybe we'll see Steam, because Steam at this point is going to have to compete, is going to have to make yeah. changes, is going to have to figure out how to be up with what Epic is trying to do with their store. So I think that's going to be better for us. And honestly, I think this could be the start of where we start to see the all digital stuff happening. Because for years in this argument, people were saying that the potential for digital games would be, Hey, they're 60 bucks at the store. They're 40 here on digital because we don't have to worry about manufacturing it. You can get games that are cheaper price. We haven't seen that yet at all. Maybe a little bit in some cases, but this, well, you do with how often it goes on sale though. Right. 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 But out of the box, like if the day it launches, like let's say the new call of duty, Hey, you can spend 70 bucks at the store to get the new call of duty, or you can pay 40 to 50 and play it here on digital and be able to not, you wouldn't have to go to the store to do it Um, with their revenue split. And uh, the Metro uh, deep silver, the developers of Metro Exodus, they even said that one of the reasons why we were partnering with them is to be able to produce, be able to potentially have the money to produce better games by having this bigger revenue split and split and passing the savings on to the customer. And that's why I think, on the I think that's why it's 40 bucks on Epic. 
it's it 40 is, bucks. I thought it, it was 50. It's cheaper. It's cheap. Uh, it's, it, I think it is 50, but it for sure is cheaper on the yeah, Epic store. I, because I know on the Steam store, it's the 59.99 that we're all used to. And I think on Epic, it's the 49.99. I think right. I could be wrong. It might be 40, but either so, way, it's definitely cheap. Right. I look at this completely in a positive light. I think this is going to do a lot of, uh, I think it's going to do a lot of good for the uh, marketplace going forward the, the in the digital space. You know, and here's my other thought on this. This isn't a, you know, Shadow of the Tomb Raider comes is advertised to come out on PlayStation, Xbox, and PC. Mm -hmm. And then three weeks before it comes out, oh, we're not offering on PlayStation. Right. True. You know, so it's not like you're, I mean, just go to the Epic Store. And also the other thing, I know that Steam has all the features like the trophies and all that good stuff, but... If you're kind of a casual gamer, you probably don't even know it's there. Mm -hmm. You know, if you're a casual, you know, I'd, as long well, as I can play the game and it runs smooth and there's no like issues as far as uh, validating my purchase or if something goes wrong that I can't get it back and my information, you know, that sort of thing. I don't yeah. see the big and, bugaboo. And also there's another side to this too is this isn't new for PC gamers. I mean there are a lot of games that don't come out on steam like for example i have um the origin launcher for the battlefield games the battlefront games anything ea right and then i have the uplay store for anything ubisoft now with steam and i don't know i don't know if epic has this but with steam you can add the code you can add what you use to redeemed that game into steam so you can launch it straight from there you don't have to go to each different launcher so i don't know if epic has that yet um, but that is that basically what I'm getting at is it's, this isn't something that's new to PC gamers. I mean, it's not uncommon to open a different launcher to play the game you want to play. And it's also not hard, right. <laughs> it's not hard. Right. Yeah. But that, it, that was my next thing was that it's not very difficult at all. Yeah. yeah. But isn't that also part of the complaint is the fact that it's like, look, we already have all these other ones that we have to do. And now here we have an inferior version of a launcher. And it's not like Epic doesn't have the manpower or the resources that when they launch this to have more features, you know, something as simple as reviews. You know, that seems like a no brainer. It seems like if anybody launched anything that you couldn't, I mean, like, let's use Walmart as an example. Let's say that they launched a new site and you could buy all your items from there, your grocery items and stuff like that, but they didn't have an ability to review stuff. Reviewing that can be very good because you want this new TV and maybe you can't find where it says something about refresh rate and somebody has a review of specifically, you know, catering to, Oh, the refresh rate is good or bad. You know, that's something that's very important. Some, so Epic is launching this thing and maybe they're launching it before because they want, they want people, they want the eyes on them. But unfortunately now they're creating this system where like, I didn't even hear about how few features it had until this problem. So now it's bringing my attention to the fact that it has so little features because of this situation. Whereas, you know, if they wouldn't have done this, then granted, it's still a problem for the real tech heavy people and they still notice it. But now the average Joe who doesn't know anything about PCs, now I know about that stuff. I know that it has 80 features that just are on steam but not on it and uh, to me you know reviews just seems like it just seems like the most easy thing how do you not have that already no they, and, i mean they, i feel like you give you can give any excuse like oh well they just got here it's like yeah they just got here however they have the platform of steam to be compared to so why would you launch in any kind of a state that you don't have the same features as your counterpart you know throw all the fortnite money all the v bucks around and get your exclusives and everything but what good is that going to do if people can so easily tear down your product well let me let me also clarify too they do have reviews 
-hmm. specifically what I was saying is one of the things that steam has is because they have this, the forum support inside the launcher, they have like, and Fran was talking about this, there's specific pages. So there's a page like an IGN page in the steam, um, forum that you right. can go to and that's where they post all the reviews and stuff. So in, in the sense of like an iTunes or like a normal like marketplace, there are reviews there so you can see people reviewing the game, but they like steam has more like in-depth in-depth right. features. So isn't it user reviews that they don't have yet. No, they, no, that they, no I'm is? pretty sure. I'm pretty sure Epic does have user reviews. They just don't have that specific um, advanced system of, Hey, we have like, look at all these forum people talking about it. Like, and also yeah. another, uh, the biggest complaint I've seen is controller support. So one of the things that steam has is not while you're not even in the game, you can use your controller to navigate around the marketplace. Um, and some games, some games that don't have it automatically enabled controller support, you can with steam. Now with Epic, you could still use your controller to play games, but it's, it's not that's one of the things that people don't like is it's not as intuitive to right now to notice the games that don't have controller support you know because yeah. i think the base the way it basically works is kind of similar to emulate emulation i almost said oh, okay. emulation yeah. so that that's one of them but also kind of to what you were saying that's kind of circles back to what i was saying too is uh, they've gotten better, but like the Uplay launcher and the Origin launcher are inferior to Steam. Steam is the big boy here, you know, but there are some games like Origin's the best example that I just open the Origin launcher if I'm going to play any of my Battlefield games just because um, I have the kind of uh, Origin access account. So, right. so but then still that's sort of my point though is is the fact that they're not trying to be the EA launcher. They're not trying to be the Ubisoft launcher where you're only launching those games. These are big budgeted third party games. And so, you know, kind of like what coach was saying how they're coming out on all the systems and so now you're trying to create this ecosystem within the PC system. You know, and part of the reason people like choosing that is so that they don't have to worry about, you know, exclusivities and stuff other than, you know, obviously like The Last of Us and, and stuff like that. But yeah, it just seems it seems very not not forward thinking and on their part that they didn't stop and go, OK, well, you know, let's get this stuff. Let's make this a priority. You know, instead of having Marshmallow do a freaking concert in Fortnite, maybe work on some features. Well, it's also the 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 biggest thing that I'm looking forward to about it is um, the is going to be definitely that revenue split because mm -hmm. I think Steam's going to have to institute something like that to keep people from continuing to do that. And sure. that's where I think it's going to be the biggest benefit for the industry is to finally have this big push, especially with what Google's doing with Project Stream and how Xbox is potentially looking at having a streaming box. This mm -hmm. all happening together, I think, could lead through the next breakthrough in the gaming industry. So that's why I'm so pro about it and not so right. hating on it. But I understand that there are things that are negative about it. I'm just looking more forward than I am at the now. So that's that's where right. I'm at. I mean, honestly, um, just for anybody who might be new pre new to this podcast, um, I don't really care about the PC. So my Go voice Miller. right now is just shut up yeah you and your x excel sheets and your calculator Fuck you i'm doing my taxes right now motherfucker so um but i don't i don't particularly care that much about it but i can kind of see like where where everybody's coming from and i just i tr the only way i can truly put myself in their shoes is tr try to imagine if there was a launcher on the playstation 4 that suddenly i had to start using that launcher in order to play certain games you know and so that's the only way i can that's that's huh? good. that's as said some people aren't ready for it definitely and that's right, where right. I think and i mean i i'm as far as as far as what you were saying about the um, revenue split, I'm totally on that side because anytime, you know, you can give more money to the developers rather than the person who's selling the game, like, yes, please. I want those developers to stay in business and to make more money. And hopefully, yes, like you said, Steam will now have to, they have to compete with that. There's, I mean, that's not even up for debate at this point. Right. Um, and I, get it, I mean, I mean, 
what's frustrating for me and and other people who are mad about the situation what's frustrating about it is that it's it's frustrating to see someone like epic just basically throw money at a wall and think that they can just be the big man on campus and that's kind of what's frustrating because then the other the other part that the part we haven't touched on yet is the moral part about having ads run on steam and then taking it off. Now, granted, their messaging at first was not great because a lot of people got pissed off about the fact that, oh, I pre-ordered on Steam, and so what? Now I'm just, you know, shit out of luck or something? Now they had to afterwards say, no, 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 no. If you did pre-order on Steam, you're fine. You know, you don't have to worry about that. So that's their part for not, you know, saying it correctly. But still, they they paid a company. They paid Steam. You know, uh, who knows, you know, the back, the background paperwork that is in that, but they paid steam to advertise their game and two weeks, which isn't really long. I mean, if anything, the game probably has already gone gold. So there is no changes that they're going to make to it. So it's, it's official. It's a finished game. And so now two weeks before it comes out, they're basically like, you know, Thank you for advertising for us. You know, now fuck off. Right. And I, I mean, mean, that's, I feel like that's one thing that a lot of people are pissed off about. And that's definitely one thing that's a lot more common nowadays because, I mean, I talked about it a couple episodes ago, but like even just like five years ago, I don't feel like as many people cared. But then YouTube, YouTubers got more. Uh, um, news heavy and forums and Reddit and everything. And so now people feel like they have a voice. And so maybe they didn't care about it before because, you know, they just felt like, well, what's the point now we have the voice, we have the ability to do stuff and to have our voices heard, whether it be on a forum, whether it be on Reddit. And so now with that voice comes you know, caring. And, and so like I, this would have happened maybe a couple of years ago, who knows, maybe we wouldn't even really be talking about it. Yeah. I no, mean, you're right. It, it circles, it definitely circles back to same thing with where gaming's at today. Like, you know, for example, Skyrim is one of the games that I have spent probably the most time in, in gaming. And I did that as a completely singular experience. Whereas mm -hmm. you look at now God of War, God of War is in the same vein. It's a very single player heavy focus. There's not a whole lot of community involvement, but there is now on the outside of it. Everyone's like, oh, how did you feel at that part when the blah, blah, blah. And, and you're making it a more social experience, which is fantastic. But you're right. It, it, it's definitely a difference in time. We you know, used to look at games that maybe weren't the best they're like oh these are the best games i've ever played and nowadays you'll look up reviews and people talking about it and they're like wow that game was a steaming pile of shit and you're like well it wasn't to me so right. time definitely has yeah i mean that's spot on yeah. coach you were saying something well i was just saying the idea that they were advertising on steam and then they had a sudden shift is more viable like a, a better argument than let's just be mad because it's not going to be yeah. there you yeah. know that that's a much better argument of you know quote unquote false advertising, in true, a true, in true, a small true. sense you know, but I think that uh, the people that made extra that made Metro uh, did everything they were supposed to do in this case you know they let the pre sales stay uh, for those that mm -hmm. pre ordered and again if you haven't pre ordered it by now the chances of you pre ordering is probably not a thing um, yeah. And if you haven't played the Metro games, the Metro games are actually pretty good. Yeah. Um, and they go on sale like PSN all the time for like five bucks. So right. you can get your fix. And, uh, and so I don't know what. <laughs> <Sorry. Zing. laughs> so I don't know. Uh, so I don't know what the big hubaboo overall is about, honestly. But the idea that they advertised for Steam and then they said, no, nah, never mind, we're good. Uh, that is a much better argument than, oh, I can't play it on Steam. Right, 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 right. 
Hubbaboo so, is now my new favorite word. Thank right? you. Right? Thank you, Coach. <laughs> I mean, hey. <laughs> All right. So we would like to know your guys' opinion. What side are you on? Specifically, if you are a PC player out there, you know, because it's so hard for a console player like me to just give a crap about this because it's just, it does not affect me plebe, whatsoever. Fucking plebe. <laughs> so um let us know what's your what's your opinion on the situation where do you guys stand um you can let us know uh, at our twitter or threat x3 productions at gmail.com so let us know there up next we're going to be talking about the incoming threats all right so incoming threats uh we always do the first episode of every month we talk about basically everything that's coming out everything that we're excited for you know we try to hit everything so if you didn't hear it on here um you know possibly i didn't happen to catch that one but uh in the descriptions down below we will have the list we will have the um this is new this is something new that we're trying so we will have the list it'll have the dates and the titles and a link to a a trailer so if you hear something you're like huh that's interesting we will have a link to the the youtube trailer so all right so let's get started with games today and on february 1st we got 8-bit hordes which apparently is actually a sequel to some 8-bit like like war or army or something i don't know anyways but it basically looks like an old school warcraft like game and i was actually super excited about this i went on to the playstation ready to buy it and it was 29.99 and i'm mm, like pretty much mm. it, it completely floored me because it's like i looked at it and i'm like you know this looks like an awesome 20 dollars game and just that extra ten dollars was enough for me to go i'm good I'm good. I mean, it is purposefully being an old school game with old school graphics and even old school. I mean, for first off, this is an RTS, so I don't even know how it's going to control with a controller. Those have so always been like, really finicky. RTS oh, yeah. is on a console. I mean, yeah, exactly. <laughs> so having faith that this random ass, you know, company somehow got it right. I just like, nope. That's good. Like literally ten dollars, and I would have bought it on the spot. Um, Animal Super Squad. This looks like a really unique platformer because, like, you're an animal and you put like wheels on yourself and you're like driving around. It looks it looks really nice. Um, trailer in the description below, so you'll you'll see exactly what I mean if you if you look at the trailer. War Groove is a turn based strategy where you kind you can actually have a build your own adventure mode so i'm pretty sure it, it's like any you know build your own thing where it has its own campaign but then you can also build your own thing so that that looked like an interesting one um and it i you know oh by the way uh one thing i did not mention if i don't say what platform it's available on then it's on all of them so unless I specifically say like switch, then you can assume that it's on all consoles and PC. Um, so heading into February 5th away journey to the unexpected. Um, this one actually looks really interesting. I believe this was revealed at the kind of funny, whatever game showcase. Know. Yep. Thank you. Thank you. Showcase. Um, but this one actually looks really cool because it looks like it's the same art design as the Dragon Ball Z and Dragon Age people. But now it's this FPS roguelike. And so you can have different characters and obviously they're going to have different strikes. And it really looks like it's leaning into the roguelike. But having those um, like animations in, you know, an FPS looks really interesting. And I mean, I I'm I'm very intrigued for it sure. It almost kind of looks Zelda like in a sense. I can in see a, that. Yeah. In yeah. A, like FPS, like yeah, it just kind of has that feel to it. Mm-hmm. And I mean like the arts uh, I, I can't emphasize the art style enough because they it's, it's just great. Cool. Yeah. Um the occupation, which is a narrative walking simulator with light puzzles. And so if that's your type of game, it does look pretty interesting as far as, um, I mean, it's called the occupation because, you know, obviously we're being, I believe we're being like occupied by aliens or something like that. I can't 
I can't remember off the top of my head, but hey, trailer in the description. So if you're super interested in those type of narrative experiences, it definitely did look very intriguing. Real quick before you get to February 6th, uh, yep. pause. The uh, Overkill's Walking Dead game was actually the delayed um, uh, for certainty. Really? Yeah. Really? Yeah, it's yeah, not coming. They, they, I, I got all this on IGN, so that's weird. Yeah. That's, okay, so um, no, February the, 6th. Now, the... Uh, that's only the console, the PC. Correct. The PC is still, uh, the PC's been out in beta, but yeah. okay. the console version is, it's not coming out anytime soon. Dang, that sucks. Um, so February 6th, February 6th, um, the Astroneer. This one's only going to be PC and Xbox One. Um, this looks kind of like a No Man's Sky without any combat. Um, yep. it, it's very stylized as far as like the art style. It's kind of cartoony, but pixel arty at the same time. But that's the best way I could have described it, is no man's sky, no combat. It looks, it looks cute. It looks fun. Um, but you know, obviously I don't know if it's something I will personally. And then, yeah, apparently walking dead, which if you go on IGN, it says it's coming out, but I was just informed that apparently it's been delayed. So that sucks. Yeah, Starbreeze uh, is going through a lot of restructuring, and so they're like, oh, that's well, true. we don't know that's when true. we can get that game out. True. Uh, February 12th, Trials Rising. Yes. Um, this is going to be the jam. Uh, my one sentence description was this was more trials. I mean, if trials is your thing, then this seems to be like the next evolution in trials. Which trials is not a bad thing, but you know, trials fusion was one of the first games that I bought with my PS4. Like when I saw it, I was mm -hmm. like, you know, cause I never really liked, I played them, but never really enjoyed them. Trials fusion is a phenomenal game. And it's so cool. Cause it's very stylized, like futuristic and like the, right. the theme song I'll still like listen to every now and then. Um, but mm -hmm. when I saw this at E3, I was like, Oh yes, please. Like I need more trials now. Yeah. Yeah. And no, I mean, it's been a while since the, yeah, it was like 20 came out. So, 13 i think yeah it's so i mean it's, it's about time and uh it's about play time and you know trials fusion is just a really good i don't even call it a racer it's just kind of you're racing against yourself uh yeah. it's more of a puzzler just, yeah it's just it's more of a puzzle game than anything else really um yeah, i mean you do technically race against the clock and yeah you can see like ghost versions of yourself or if you have uh, online turned on you see like ghost uh ghost versions of like your friends so like i would always like to try to beat like you know nate or kevin or other one of our old members and i would be like yeah and so like it definitely is an interesting experience so i mean uh, i want to say um i want to say that they're just they're just adding more to it and even having like really challenging sections and so that's that's really cool um Next up, Hyper Jam. This looks like a pretty interesting kind of brawler type game. And by brawler, I mean um, like Smash Bros kind of game. Um, sort of because, I, I mean, there's like four people. It's very stylized. It's very much, you know, each person has... It's kind of, I guess it's a brawler slash overwatch because everybody has their own skills and yada yada. So, But it looks really cool. I mean... A lot of these games in February are very stylized until we get to the end of the month where we get the big hitters. So uh, February 14, Degrees of Separation. This looks like a very interesting uh, puzzle platformer. Um, you can either play uh, with two people, that which is the way, obviously, the developers want it to be played, or you can play it kind of like the f the second uh, Unraveled, where you could just switch between the two characters and you could do it that way. And so it looks really cool. And I mean, it has a very interesting mechanic where one person is made of fire and one person is made of ice. And so the way you have to do certain puzzles is just kind of cool. So the art style is kind of limbo esque in the way of the animation. Yes. Um, mm -hmm. But you're right there. The, the art style is also looks to be a game mechanic and it looks yes. very, very cool. Yeah. Definitely. <laughs> and then another really back. cool puzzle game is <laughs> cool. <Shut the> fuck. <laughs> 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 uh, another really cool. Puzzler is a fold apart, which is a puzzle game involving the way you fold 
a piece of paper and so like the, paper mario yeah there's a there's like a paper on the on the screen and depending on how you fold it um is how like you get your person from the left side of the screen to the right side of the screen and so you have to find interesting ways of doing it and obviously once again very stylized very artistic and everything and so now we're starting to get into the more heavy hitters in february 15 we got jump force which is pretty much just anime smash bros um i don't know if i would necessarily call it anime smash bros uh if you look at the gameplay of it it actually looks more like uh tenkaichi yeah, Takaichi or, you know, like Xenoverse, uh, mm-hmm. even to a smaller extent, like the Pokemon slash Tekken game that's out on Switch, which is really fun. But, um, right, right. You know, I so it's more along those, it's, it's more like a fighter than like just a brawler. Like, you right, right, right. Before, you know? I meant it more in the way that, like, you have, you have a world colliding. All- yeah, exactly. That that that's the way I more meant it as. But yes, you're absolutely right. It's not like it's not side scroller. So I hope I didn't throw anybody off there. Uh, Metro, I gotta be, go ahead. Sorry, <laughs> I got to be 100 percent honest here. I think this might be one of those games that falls into the classic Watchdog presentation of E3 because the game right. looked phenomenal at E3, and right. this one looks kind of like I think Fighters looks a lot better than this. Oh gosh. Oh, yeah. Well, and I think Fighters has the um, the. But you have to understand guess, that they're totally different games. Though. I understand, like, but like, Fighters is, is more two D with three D background, and right. this is a full on three D fighter. Um, so you know, give or take, but I mean, you're right. Uh, Fighters way better, is probably yeah. a much better fighting game, mm-hmm. but you know, when you have this mashup and the way it looks is pretty cool. Mm-hmm. Um, but it seems to me like there's other issues with it, but I mean, I'm still excited for it and I hope it does well. Right. Um, next up Metro Exodus, which we talked enough about that. So, I mean, obviously all you really need to know is that it's the third Metro, uh, but now it's open world. So that's one thing that I'm definitely intrigued about is the fact that it's open world because to me, like out of all of the apocalyptic, um, games, this and like rage two are the main ones that i'm really looking at because this has the lineage and rage two has the intriguing you know remix i guess would be the right word to put it so um crackdown finally maybe like i'm expecting (laughs) i know that this is just like the cynical like ps4 fanboy in me but it's like i'm expecting like it's 48 hours right before it releases and they're just like just kidding (laughs) Hey, Terry Crews, though. Yeah, yeah. right. <laughs> I mean, this is definitely, you know, kind of the last running joke of the uh, generation, mm-hmm. you know, of because this was a game that was showed like back when Xbox One and PS4 were first brought in, like within that first year, at least, you know, along oh, with yeah, like Kingdom definitely. Hearts and Shinmu and all that kind of stuff. And, you know, you know, you're bad when Kingdom Hearts beat you to, to the release. <laughs> yeah. And Final Fantasy 15. And that's a good point too. That's true, right? <laughs> and Square Enix beat you at a game, you know. Um, but no, so I mean, this is kind of the last running joke. I, I, is it going to be good? I mean, I don't know. Like Kingdom Hearts Three has actually turned out to be a pretty good game. Um, and Final Fantasy Fifteen, once they got all the DLC out, or most of the DLC, because they they're stopping the DLC now. But uh, right. you know, that's turned out to be pretty good. So you know. Last Guardian had its issues, but now that they've kind of patched it, it's been okay. So we'll it'd be interesting to see how this turns out. But would this one have a much more multiplayer focus in it that's been going on for five years? And you know how much yeah. has changed in five years? I I don't know, man. Talk about a game that is a detriment to the ideas and choices of original Xbox One. Um, yeah. Because I guarantee you that if they didn't start this project with so much multiplayer focus so much cloud focus so much everyone's connected always online this game probably would have come out a lot sooner i'm pretty sure they had to they had this giant vision super mediocre (laughs) yeah i'm pretty sure they had this giant vision for um the multiplayer aspect of it that they just had to completely scrap and start over because everyone's you know turned around so hopefully it's good at full transparency i played a little bit of crackdown one on xbox 360 but i didn't have xbox 360 for years so yeah, right i don't have a whole lot of experience but it looks it looks like just cause and uh saints row had a baby 
I mean, yeah. at least with the gameplay for uh, Crackdown 3. But it looks fun. I just don't have an Xbox. Yeah. And then, so next up is um, Far Cry New Dawn. Um, this is definitely one of the ones I was kind of hinting at when I was all like, out of all the apocalyptic games, <laughs> like this one, it has the very, very unlucky um I guess unluck it's just unlucky because this got announced after Rage 2. So I look at this game and it's like, okay, this looks almost exactly like Rage 2. You know, and I mean, I know I know it's like one of the very first like direct sequels and that's interesting, but I don't know. Nate, you you give me the positive side of this. The positive side of this for me is I was very disappointed by Far Cry 5. I um, yeah. loved loved some of the new mechanics. Like I think some of the things they did really are going to grow the series to to better lengths. Um but just it just didn't seem like it connected well. It was the least Far Cry feeling game to me out of all the ones I played. 3, you know, me and you have a little bit of a different background. I love the modern Far Cries, you know, you love Far Cry 2. Right. I never had right. really experience with that. So for me, the pinnacle has always been 3. 3, I remember being such an outstanding game. And then 4, you know, at the time when I played it, I just played 3 again. And so I was like, well, this feels like more of the same, but when mm -hmm. I reflected back on it, I had a better view. So I'm excited for New Dawn because it looks like the Far Cry game I want, but still in the setting that was oh kind of cool. Like they made the setting cooler with New Dawn, but you know, the things like being able to like visually change the way your gun looks and add like like added on attachments with like rope and tape, like it it looks yeah. like the Far Cry series that I love. So this looks like it's going to be a remedy to the experience I had with five. Now, what do you think about the RPG elements? Me personally, I am not a super huge fan of them because I feel like it, even, even in the first person shooter genre, I feel like we have enough RPG first person shooters, um, but also this really, this really kind of puts it in a weird spot because like none of the other far cries have been very rpg focused and so now we're having numbers pop up every time we shoot somebody you know we're having you know rare and ultra rare guns and stuff like so what's your hurt what's your views on that i mean i'm not adverse to it simply because i think one of the biggest benefits that we've seen is the change with the assassin's creed series you know assassin's creed right. with origins made it much more of a RPG and then Odyssey even more so. And that ended up right. working for that series. Now it's not, you know, what I love because I love the traditional Assassin's Creed games, the linear ones, but those right. games, the new ones are still good. So if it's stuff that works, then, then, you know, we'll just see, we'll just have to see how well it works with it. You know, right. I'm, and I feel like that's a lot of people's like, um, I guess, qu quarrel. <laughs> that's a lot qualm thank you that was quarrel um that's a lot of people's qualm with the assassin's creed that yes it's a good game but it's not an assassin's creed game anymore right and so right. that's what i'm worried about like far cry 5 as much as it changed and might not have felt like a far cry game it was still so much um it was still so recognizable and it still gave me the far cry feels where it was okay. And I actually like you, I liked the changes. So now we have this RPG factor to it. Like one of the things I'm going to be super pissed off about, I don't know cause I haven't played the game, but one thing I'm going to be super pissed off about is if I land a perfect headshot and the guy doesn't die because I have a white gun rather than a gold gun or something like that's something that really worries me, especially just because that's not what Far Cry is. Like if I did that in Rage or whatever, that would make sense because like Rage was a little bit more of an RPG, even though not so much. But you know, you know what I'm Borderlands sure. like? Like you, you talking about exactly. having to worry about exactly. what your what the damage your gun has? yeah exactly yeah i think that, you know i really don't know i think that could work for it but i see where, where you're coming from would you say that the last one that was similar to that would be primal because remember primal having very basic rpg elements um for example right. in the, sense of right. the different areas so if you wanted to go up north you had to craft um 
like warm clothes. You had to craft right, right. winter clothes. And so that worked. I mean, it, it was very basic, but I mean, I liked the change that it, that it was. So, I mean, you know, we'll just, we'll have to see. Yeah. And lastly, speaking of RPGs, uh, February 22nd, or depending on what fucking version you have, um, Anthem. <laughs> <laughs> a lot okay, of pure so I totally miss that you had to have a different version to get it on the twenty second. So a no, lot of peers on the fifteen. If you have like it on PC and you also have Origin, I don't know. It's so freaking. Oh, good. They had to put yeah. out a table to yep. let people know when they can fucking have it. Like that. That's a clear sign that like what the fuck, guys. Yeah, yeah. I, I remember seeing that tweet. Um, I actually saw it from Alana Pierce and I was like, wow. Well, I mean, that's, that's very normal for EA because their whole programs with like um, origin access and origin premiere access with premiere, you can get the game earlier and you can pay 15 bucks a month and just mm -hmm. play all the new games. So that is one negative to the whole subscription service. And what we talked about with the Epic store is stuff like that is like, okay, well can like, it's just too confusing right right and i mean especially this is a game uh me and coach have played it is a game that we're like okay we looked at the we looked at the whole 2019 we're like okay what are a couple of games that we could try to see and make a lot of content on and we already have to compete as as the small channel that we are we already have to compete with all the you know people who have early access um but now we have to compete with the fact that pc people are getting it a whole you know week before us and so they're going to be able to put out way more content than us and it just so happens that well we play it on the playstation 4 because that's what we're playing it on so it's like we're being punished because we don't have a pc or we don't have origins and i get that that's the incentive but like the 15 to the 20 sec a whole freaking week like i felt like before it was at least only like three days or something like that but now you have a whole week and so now it's putting small creators like me and probably thousands of others in a really tough spot because i mean like what if you just don't have the money for that that good of a pc or whatever what if you are a ps4 exclusive channel you know i mean you're just shit out of luck yeah it's not great for sure um mm. and i'm with you like usually it's like three days um like you know basically they get the weekend before yeah right if so it's if it comes out on tuesday they get it on friday so like even that makes sense yeah but i don't the whole week thing i mean that's like i understand you got to push your product but that's just like a little bit extreme mm -hmm. to me mm -hmm. Um, and what that also means for me is that the game is actually closer to being a hundred percent what the game is than maybe you thought it was last weekend. Yeah. Um, you know, during the VIP demo or whatever the crap they called it. Speaking of, I gotta get rid of my GameStop pre order. Um, but I don't know what the overall logic is behind having it a week early. I mm -hmm. just don't. Yeah, because everything you just said is very, very true. It's 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 the same thing Epic's doing with Metro. Of hey, let's give you an incentive to come to and use our platform, and use the benefits that we have. You can get it a week early, and you are right. It used to be something like three days, and that was kind of okay. This is a little like the fact when you have to produce a chart to show when yeah. the game is coming out it's not it's not consumer focused it's it's you're definitely confusing the consumer and i will throw this out there part of pc master race you know what i'm saying um so you guys played it this morning when i woke yeah. up i was like i'm gonna play it and <clears throat> two days two or three days ago i couldn't find it on the store so i didn't pre-download it and so i went on my ps4 and i was like all right i'm gonna download it and i've got good internet speed but it was like 26 gigs and they was like hey it's gonna take about an hour or 70 minutes i'm like all right. And so I got on my PC and started downloading. It's like, all right, be ready, be ready in 20 minutes. And it's 42 gigs. I was like, all right, cool, cool. <laughs> yeah, that's just limitations of the PlayStation there. No, I know. Yeah. I know. I know. I was just, I was making a PC mess race joke. Anyway. Um, 
Yeah, I don't know. It is. It's I, not consumer I, I focused. Know. It's not definitely not. Yes, I, I would like to. We have played it, and we haven't had a try and because we haven't had a weekly grind in a little while. So I would like to talk real, real fast, just because of how long we're running. But I would like to know, like, what are what are your thoughts so far on it, and and I guess, uh, yeah, what do what do we want to do with it as far as you know? I don't know, coach. <laughs> I mean, I, the only thing that concerns me is that, like, right now there's not a whole lot going on. Like, I understand it's a demo, so, like, right. it's one of those things where you have to wait until the game comes out, mm-hmm. you know? But what, uh, like, what, what's going to be different about the actual game versus the demo? Uh, the fact that it was a six-week-old build, basically. Yeah, I do not believe that. I'm, I mean... I just don't like, why would you put out an inferior version for your demo? You're trying to convince people to buy your game. Well, I think so, the whole six week of it is just like the systems and stuff. Like I think the main focus of it is, is, is because of this whole microtransaction thing with EA being plagued right. by it is they, Hey, you know, we're saying, Hey, you know, the economy you're seeing, it's not going to be representative of, of what's actually there because we're fixing it, we're updating it up until the game so we can make sure it's right. That's right, but I this isn't even about concerned. the economy. This is gameplay, well, the, environment. Yeah. Yeah. Right, right. Well, that the economy sort of was a part of it too because people were were clipping out like, hey, look at how egregious this is, 20 bucks for a skin, and then being like, hey, that's not what it's going to be. That's what we were working with at the time. No, but I get what right. you're saying. There were there were a lot of bugs and like bad bugs. Like I've seen people who had the forever load, like the 95 load yeah. bug. And they did sort of change that from the the private one to the public one, at least from the time that I've played it. They've changed that. Um, but I, I am torn. You know, like this was a game that I wanted to try to cover. And it was, like I said, you know, what? five minutes ago you know it was one that we talked about okay you know let's do this let's try to do some content on it and it's just it hasn't it hasn't won me over as much as i want to because i'm really torn i'm i'm at a, i'm at a 50 50 right now because on the one hand when you do get playing or you do have even just me and coach for instance like it can be really fun but then the problem has been fucking playing <laughs> because yeah. We get we get stuck somewhere or we have to reload or some and I get it. It's a beta. It's a demo. I don't know. I don't know because I mean it's so I I am scared. You know, even though we have something worked out here that we're not going to spend full price. You know, um, even though it's still like, I, how much money am I willing to put towards this? How much am I really starting to do? And then what if EA pulls an EA and they it's just it's grindy as f it's microtransactions up the game like am i gonna really want to do content on it am i really gonna feel the passion to to do content that's that's when I'm, I'm really torn about it well i'll tell you one thing in particular that is a good benefit for the game and something i heard about the other night is in their economy you can use like there there are two different currencies You've, you've got your coins and you've got your shards. Is that what it is, shards? Yeah, I think so. You can use, if there's a skin or something that you like, if you don't have enough coins that you earn in the game, you can use shards and vice versa. To You can combine currencies to get whatever you want. So it's not necessarily that you have to pay for the shards just to get this you can you know but we'll also have to see how frequently and how much how many okay. coins you get per interaction that, that made luke skywalker you know you had to do like hundreds of hours just to unlock him when he's like a staple of he was available in the first freaking game and they made it so that you had to like grind for 40 freaking hours just to get him so I do not trust EA. It's like them giving us the option to buy it with coins is just because. Well, it's I trust their... Bioware more than EA. And in this, oh my God, Bioware has no say in this. Bioware we were... has more say than Bioware has more say than Dice because Dice is owned specifically by EA. So I, I think it's going to be a less egregious situation still... than. Well, here it goes. It's still wow. Activision type of thing where Activision gets to decide exactly, you know, Activision got to decide that it was called Blackout. They had a whole different title picked out for this mode and they were really excited about it. 
And to see right. like Lord Vanderhall's face when he talked about, oh yeah, we had this other name. Like, right, but, but it's it, it's very similar to it's the difference is like with PlayStation and like Sony Santa Monica or you know, PlayStation and Sucker Punch. It's a company that is owned by, it's a developer owned by this company, but they're not having, now granted PlayStation is better, but it's the same thing with, you have e, EA who owns Bioware, but then you have EA and DICE, who DICE is an EA studio. You know what I'm saying? So that's why I think well, there is going to be a difference they there. Have less say in it. They're still the distributor of the game. They're still the one giving the money. And in order to make the overlords happy, they have to, to a certain extent, they have pushback. I'm never going to try to imagine that they don't have any pushback. But this is money we're talking about. This is cold, hard cash. You know, especially since it's set up exactly like a Fortnite menu just fucking proves it because oh my god how much did Fortnite make now granted it's a free game but that doesn't matter to EA because once again it's about the fucking dollar signs see this is one reason why I love this show is me and Nick are on two different points throughout this entire yeah. show and I fucking love All it right. <laughs> well I here's the other thing that right the of history. if you don't like it don't buy it am I right EA <laughs> Well, here's my biggest concern with Anthem, honestly. Like, how many hours would you say we've played it so far, Nick? I, I think I've put in at least like ten hours, ten to fifteen, something like that. I I have I have way too much going on, and it like the little that I have played, I wasn't so overwhelmingly positive about it that like I felt the need to keep going. So, if you're at ten, I would have to say I was maybe at a half to three quarters of that you know because i just i really have not played that much like you were uh you were level 13 right yeah 14 i think you had just gotten to 14. i was just on the edge yeah i had just barely gotten to 12 i think and i think that's just because of you know i happened to the time i happened or what i was doing i was just happened to i don't know yeah so point being i haven't played that much of it but right. like I said, it is just because it really hasn't sold me on it. It hasn't it hasn't convinced me that yeah, I need to do this. I need to be playing this. And so it's just it's just a worry. And I'm pretty sure plenty of people, not only that, but I think another big thing that a lot of people aren't like also talking about is the time. This is coming out right before another similar game granted it doesn't have like flying exosuits or whatever but it's a similar game division so how many people there's plenty of like forums and stuff where people are just like yeah i'm just gonna wait for division or you know why would i play this when i can play warframe you know there's plenty of people saying that so it's like not only do they have ea and the just the name alone gets this passion inside people like me, even though there are plenty of people like Nate who trust Bioware and maybe rightfully so we'll have to wait and see, but there are plenty of people like me that just the name of EA is just enough to make them go, ah, I don't know. So they get not only that, but they're dropped right for a competitor. And it's like, you know, I don't know. I haven't heard as many negatives as far as everything goes towards division two so uh we need to move on though because we're getting a little long and we haven't even gotten a movie so let's get on to the movies february 1st we had a couple came out so obviously this is after february 1st so um but miss bala i thought the interest i'm going to go see uh later tonight after the super bowl mm -hmm. so it's just Stay tuned for that review on uh, Movie Fix, if you would. Um, so the interesting one about that is that it was made, or it was a full Latino cast and like crew and stuff like that. So mm -hmm. I thought that was cool. Uh, Velvet Buzzsaw is another one. That's a Netflix one. I started watching it and haven't gotten through it, but I will definitely give my thoughts on that for Movie Fix as well. Um, February 8th. We got High Flying Bird. I don't know what that is. The Lego Movie 2, the second part. <laughs> yeah. The plot of this was, that was not be what a I expected. One. When I saw the actual trailer for it, I was like, oh, that's interesting. That's very interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what men want, which, which is... Yeah. That's 
weird. Am yeah, I the see, only one that like when I saw okay. the trailer for it, I was like, I was like, okay. I mean, we've seen this with Mel Gibson, and I was like, uh, I mean, I get what we're and doing. It's like you know, and I'm like, oh, they literally just ripped off the concept. Yeah, but then I saw a trailer. I think it was the second trailer for it when we went to go see Glass recently, and I was like, no. Oh, I'm entertained. I like that actress. And so I was like, this might be f- like funnier than I think it's going to be. I think one thing that I really, uh, I don't know. I don't know. It, it's always just a coincidence, but this one, and then there's another one where the, it's another black girl. Uh, she was in like scream or whatever, but she's getting turned into a little person. So having this and that being advertised right around the same time is almost confusing because it's just like, you know, maybe they should have waited because it seems weird. Um, The Prodigy, uh, that one looks interesting. It has the girl from Orange is the New Black, and it's almost like, it's almost like, what is it? The Omen, where Mm -hmm. the kid clearly has something wrong with them. So, okay. Cold Pursuit. My man, Liam, motherfucking Neeson. That is Ooh. name, by the way. Um, and this one actually, uh, I've been seeing some promos about it, and it says it's a dark comedy. Which, if you remember, a while back we talked about this trailer and talked about how they were going to go a comedy route. So to hear that reviewers are saying that, I'm like, well, good, because that's what I wanted to see. I wanted to see a different side of Liam Neeson because he's killing people, but he's just a normal dad. So he's probably getting used to killing people and he's he probably doesn't he's not perfect at it at first so that's really interesting this is such a meta liam neeson movie and that's what has me excited for it they Definitely. looked at the writing and was like hey it's a joke that you're a badass dad in every movie you're in or a badass character who kills people right. let's make you an actual person real person who just happens to be killing people Right, exactly. And I mean, that's what makes it the most interesting. And that's what makes it hopefully because I mean, eventually towards the end of the movie, he's going to be kicking so much ass. It's going to be funny, but getting him to that journey, I feel will it will feel more deserved than the guy from gray, who was always a badass. The guy from taken who was always a badass. We get to see him come the badass. And so that I'm actually intrigued at, um, February 14th, Valentine's day. Hey, get all, all the romantic comedies out of the way. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, I'm okay. I'm okay. No Deadpool this year. It's a little saddening. No, I'm, I'm saying that because isn't it romantic? That looks so stupid. Although it, I guess it works for Valentine. Now, funny enough, there's a, there's a movie. I want to say it's like five feet away. It has one of the sweet life of Jack and Cody twins. Um, and like they have, I can't remember what they have, but they have a disease that basically makes it so they have to live their life, you know, a certain way because they're just going to get sick from like the most basic thing or whatever. And so it's this really romantic movie. And I'm like, why is this not coming out on Valentine's Day? And instead we got this Rebecca Wilson movie where she like hits her head. And instead of, you know, um, what's the other one? I feel pretty mm-hmm. where she's like, she hits her head and she just automatically thinks she's gorgeous, which was a dumb premise but now we have this one where she's actually like stuck in a romantic comedy and so hopefully it's going to be meta enough for like the guys where they can actually go and they're like oh yeah i hate that about romantic comedies but hopefully it doesn't go too much into the fact that it is itself a romantic comedy defeating the purpose of making fun of romantic comedies you know like that's what i'm hoping but we'll have to see. I don't have anything about uh, against Rebecca Wilson other than thank God it's not Melissa McCarthy. Um, but I I saw this and I'm just like yipty yipty fucking do I who cares like moving on. Um, Alita Battle Angel. I have been hearing some positive things about this. Um, one of the main things is seeing an IMAX. That's what I've heard. Yeah, I'm very excited to see that one, actually. Um, yeah. It's probably the most my most anticipated outside of the one we're going to talk about for next week and Lego Movie 2. Yeah, um, yeah. You know, so I think – so I'm, I'm pretty stoked for it, and I plan on seeing it in IMAX, so I'm, mm. I'm ready for it. 
it's a movie I kind of feel like I can't care less about right now just because all the trailers I've seen for it don't really do anything for me. Um, I, I don't. I, I get the feeling, though, this is going to be a movie that you see it in theaters. You like it more than if you watch it. True, later. true. I think I think it's going to be like that, too. Um, up next, happy death day to you. The number two and the letter U. Um the very the first one was very like self-aware and it was meta in certain ways and so i hope that that crappy name is just part of the joke and it's still going to retain its charm it's still going to retain everything because that that does not impress me whatsoever that was such an interesting trailer too because when i saw the trailer i'm like really they're making a sequel and then the more the trailer went on i was like oh you're doing like intelligently interesting things like you are yeah. playing with this narrative that's never been done before and yeah. i was like oh it was one of those that in a single trailer viewing i went from really to oh wow oh yeah i do I had, a, I had a similar experience and the first one was just bad good enough i that i want to see the second one <laughs> <laughs> nate make nate pick i loved it um well, and I mean, I guess another thing that I found weird is the this concept has suddenly blown up. Because, I mean, we had Groundhog's Day way, way, way back. Then we had Edge of Tomorrow. And I feel, I don't know if it was Edge of Tomorrow's fault. If, like, we can go back to Tom Cruise and be like, you did this to us. But it seems weird that this concept is blowing up now. Because now, not only do we have that, we have two Netflix movies and a Netflix series. Netflix series uh, Russian Doll that just came out on February 1st, I want to say, has the same concept where the the girl with the really, really frizzy hair in Orange is the New Black, she keeps dying, and so then she has to keep reliving the. And the number one thing I'm definitely intrigued, but not enough to watch it yet, is the fact that how can they stretch this pretty basic you know, concept over episodes rather than just like a two-hour movie? Well, if you have every day be an hour long, I mean, I feel like you could. True. It'll you, be, you know, she's doing different things, make it kind of like a mystery type thing. I think it would work, you know? Kinda yeah. Like an episode of supernatural. Yeah. Exactly. And see that made sense because it was one episode. Right. And so it was very self self-referential and it was very meta and, and making fun of certain things and i really enjoyed that but that was one episode this is an entire series we'll even if it was a limited series where they purposely only had like four episodes or something like that even would make more sense but i don't know well, it's just a weird thing that suddenly we have that concept popping up everywhere now it is only eight eight episodes and they're 20 minutes a piece so oh 20 so minutes oh, yeah they're okay. like 24 I, I definitely assume that drama or, or drama things like that are more you know akin to the 40 minute long. So right. that, I, I don't know. I might give it a try. Maybe we'll see. Uh, February 22nd, how to train your dragon. This will be the last chapter. Um, this is obviously one I'm going to go see with my daughter. So I'm super excited about this one. Um, thoughts. I think how to train your dragon series is definitely a toy story kind of series um based in the sense of when it first came out i was like it's a dumb dreamworks movie i'm not gonna I, you know i don't really care but when i actually sat down and watched it, i'm like that was a fantastic animated movie like that was a mm -hmm. fantastic movie period like it had so much heart so much love put into it and the same with the second one the second one went to a place that i didn't think it would go to like to actually dive that deep into the story and have a lot more facets than you would see in a normal animated film. So um, right. this one definitely looks like an experience that I'm going to thoroughly enjoy. And I don't know if I haven't heard great things about it or if it's just something I've heard kind of a negative air towards this. So I don't really, I don't really know, but hopefully it's going to be a very emotional and, and heartwarming conclusion to this uh, trilogy they've made. Yeah. Definitely. I, I mean, if it's anything like the first two, I'm not too concerned about it. Yeah, know? me too. I mean... Even uh, if it's not as good as the second one and it's just less than the first one, you're still getting a good movie. Maybe a disappointment, but it'll still be a good movie. And I think the one thing that can sort of trigger me in certain ways, make me a little cynical or nitpicky, is when people critique... Uh, children's movie too harshly it's like 
it's like there's this huge huge amount of hate for the minions movie and it's like you are not the demographic for this movie why are you being so harsh about it now obviously you have wally you have pretty much anything pixar except for recent ones in my opinion you know toy story and you have all these to choose from that are not just kids movie they're family movies but that's always been pixar's thing dreamworks has never really pretended to be this high society cgi production company it has always been this company for kids movies now how to train your dragon i do feel is way more family centric than like obviously despicable me is a perfect example of very 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 kids movie <laughs> like boss baby yeah the, another really good example yes so i mean but that's that's the name they're making for themselves and so to to try to to try to judge it so harshly because it's like oh this kid movie suck it's like well yeah it's a freaking kids movie like i i don't know like i understand but also i don't because it's like i feel like pre zoe ann i would have been like maybe on board but afterwards it's like well she's paying attention to the moving colors for about an hour and a half I'm 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 good. <laughs> that's, that's what I like about How to Train Your Dragon as well. Is it's I don't think it's just a kids movie. I think it's just a, a very yeah. phenomenal movie. You know the Minions. Exactly. I could kind of see because when we watched the Minions the first time, you know we liked the Despicable Me movies, my wife and I. But when we watched Minions, I was like, I don't really care for like like we shut it off halfway through. I was like, it just didn't it just didn't grab me, you know. But I think yeah. that's more of a commentary on Illumination films because Illumination seems to be hitting that demographic of, hey, look at these. These are great for kids. The kids will love them. And it's like, well, they're not actually fantastic. Like The Grinch. The Grinch is a perfect example. <laughs> <laughs> but I can see Did the critiques of the minions. No, 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 no. Thank God. You're so lucky. I was forced to because I had a – I have – Zoe Ann and uh, my, my, my wife, my wife, my, my wife was super excited to go see it. And so she's like, well, we have to go see it. And so we did. Your review turned like, me away from it. Oh, yeah. It should. That was the purpose of it. <laughs> <laughs> just go watch Jim Carrey's version or even just the 50s version. Gee, Where God. are you, Christmas? No, I'm doing exactly what I said. I <laughs> What I just complained about. But I, it, it's different because it's me. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. I mean, I, I, another thing is like minions, you don't have anything that to really compare it to, but like Grinch, you have another movie to compare that to. So it's like, I'm not really being harsh on the fact that it's a kid's movie. I'm being harsh on the fact that it's like, it's just pointless to even exist. I mean, any, <laughs> any hosers. Um, so, I mean, that's pretty much it. Uh, what let's let's talk about the game that we're the most excited for and the movie we're most excited for let's start with coach game wise i'm actually pretty pumped about uh the metro game uh yeah you know because just because i bought the metro games i don't know i guess about a year ago and they were like six bucks each mm, and i bought yeah. them physical and I just liked them, and you know, I'm not even a first-person shooter guy, but the story in them was so good, and uh, the gameplay itself was entertaining for me, so I'm really looking forward to that gameplay-wise. Uh, Movie-wise, I think LEGO Movie 2 is probably the one I'm most excited for, although the Alita movie I'm interested in. Mm -hmm. You know, so. Nate? Um, so on the opposite end of, I've bought Metro, the collection several times, one on PC, one's on Xbox and one on PlayStation. And I haven't played them ever. I didn't play any of them. No, I, oh actually got, I actually got close to, I, I started, I started 20, uh, 2033 and I don't remember what happened, but I just, I played like the first 10 minutes of it and then I got distracted doing something else and never went back. So Metro, I would like to go back and play because Exodus does look really good. Now mm -hmm. for right now, for me, it's going to be new Dawn um, just because of the excitement I expressed earlier. But uh, once I get hands on with Anthem, we'll see how that will change as far as games go. Um, movies for me, probably probably have to say happy death day to you simply because I'm pretty sure that's the movie my wife and I are going to go see when we go out for Valentine's day. But nice. also I'm interested to see how this 
ends up being or how this stacks up because it just looks like a like a fascinating time to see what they're going to do with it um so movie that's probably the most i'm excited for um and i definitely have to agree with metro um i love the other ones i love their uh stealth aspect i love the detail put into just every little thing you know you blow out a candle and you can stealth a lot harder and the fact that this one is more open world focused and now we're out of the claustrophobic uh rails and now we're out in the real world but there's still going to be certain areas like certain storms will come through and you'll still have to put your mask back on but that the very first time they showed that and the fact that we were going outside, I was like, sold, just shut up and take my money because, oh my God. And I mean, I think it's, I think it, that's just one of the main reasons. Like what they were always so good at is maybe not to the level of like dishonor by any means, but it really gave you like a lot of tools and it's like, take this situation on the way you want to take this situation on. And mm. then it's like the jump from like uncharted three to four, where all of a sudden you had this big open area and you could quite literally take that situation on any way you wanted to in that big of a jump. But now um, as far as I know, it's going to be similar to, I mean, what's a good example, I guess it's not going to be open world in the sense it's of probably like, gonna be like God of war. Yes. Uh, you know, that's probably a, a good, you know, parallel because it's an open world in the sense that there's giant open areas, but not open world in the sense that they're all connected. They're all, you know, just cause, you know, levels of big um, where you can just drive from one to the, they're not going to be that. However, they are going to be big enough where exploring is going to be heavily. And I feel like exploring was always a part of Metro in the first place, but it was more like Bioshock where here's a bunch of corridors you can go down to. And if you find the extra ones to go down to, then you get extra, you know, equipment, extra ammo and stuff like that. And so exploring was more um, tertiary because it's like, well, this is what you could do in order to maybe make things easy for you, but you don't have to. Whereas this one, the exploring is just because here's a giant playground and, you know, have fun. And so that aspect of it is really interesting. And then going from the, you know, the underground to even like a desert area and having different threats and still making it feel like Metro, that makes me really excited. Uh, movies. I'd have to say, I'd have to obviously say how to train your dragon. I mean, it's not just because I have a kid. <laughs> it's because it is just, you know, I do particularly like that one um, just because I've always liked dragons, you know, and to find something like that, that is, you know, it's not, you know, rain of fire where it's so dark and dreary and oh, rain of fire. Is such a good movie. It is. It's such a good movie, but it was a lot more light. It was a lot more comedical. And I mean, I do kind of like what they did with the second one and the fact that they made dragons more part of their life and to see that continue on and it be threatened again is just, it'll be, I hope it's treated the right way because we've had, you know, we'll have three movies now and then a couple of seasons of the, of the, um, Netflix. Netflix original. So I'd really like to see how are they going to close it out? Is it going to feel like a good ending? You know, because that ending of Uncharted 4, for instance, it was just, it was so perfect, you know, because it, le it left it open just enough for it's like, oh, well, maybe we'll get a spinoff or something. But it also closed all of the other storylines and you felt like it, you felt like such a good resolution. And I really hope that I can get the same thing for How to Train Your Dragon 3. So let us know what you guys are most excited for and let us know what you're going to play the most of. Um, and up next, we actually have a really, really big announcement. It's the first time we're going to be doing an announcement here, but we have something really big coming up for you just up next. All right, I'm going to mark it. Oh boy. So what? 
from your guys's perspective because i want i want to get as much information out but also make the most sense what for you guys is the best way to put this like because like in the in like the description or whatever i would put like this is going to be a 24-hour nerd radio but does that does that it actually says need radio <laughs> well that's okay um, in the incoming thread she put far cry new dawn as far cry new damn new damn, so. <laughs> new damn. <laughs> yeah well that was just me you know being nitpicky <laughs> Um, yeah. I think a good way to, to preface it or to put it would be, we're working on an exciting new project. Um, okay. and it's going to be, or, or, or an exciting new concept or project, I think would be a good, um, you know, that okay. we're working on this radio that we're going to partner with different creators and podcasters and try to make a new form of content or something like that. Mm, yeah. Okay. <clears throat> all right so we got a brand new project that we'd like to announce today it's something that we kind of want to give a lot of room to breathe and a lot of room to uh, to kind of set up in a way and we want you guys to kind of be along with the journey with us and so the, you can you can go on to our our Facebook, or you can go on to our Twitter, TX3 Productions. You can email us anything you like. Give us your input on it, what you think we can try to do to make it unique. This is going to be, hopefully, this is going to be very community driven. And so, what is that? Well, we are going to be doing a new project, and it is going to be a 24 hour nerd radio station. Um, it's going to be online. Obviously, uh, it will have its own app, I believe. Um, and so it's it's something I've been messing around with for a while now, ever since I really got into the audio uh, production of not just this show, but in general. Um, you know, I've kind of played around with it. Obviously, we have our little musical interludes and everything. So I'm trying to make it, you know, kind of radio esque, but now it's like I want to take it and I want to go full blown as far as like think of your local radio station that you really like. And but instead of them talking about, oh my God, what is Taylor Swift up to? Or oh my God, what is Hugh Jackman up to? Instead of stuff like that, it's the stuff that matters. <laughs> Yeah. Like, like nerd stuff like well you know new movies that are coming what's chris chris hemsworth what's he what's his new project oh he's doing a new comic book thing i don't know like stuff like that and but obviously we're gonna have breaks it's gonna have music it'll have a couple of advertisements it's gonna be just like a radio station but now it's for nerds by nerds you know so we're not we're gonna have video games we're gonna have movies we're gonna we're have so many different types of podcasts we're gonna go out we're gonna find some more people get them on board as far as you know helping us out and guest starring and um everything <laughs> come market there uh how am i doing so far <laughs> good i mean i I don't, I wouldn't go too full bore in, in everything with it. Just so we don't have our expectation of, Hey, we're doing this, this, and this, and then, you know what I'm saying? Okay. So maybe next up, what I should do is, um, tell them about the samples and then what would be the next step, I guess. Does yeah. That sound about right? Okay. Yeah. All right. So obviously we can't just, come out and say, hey, we're making a 24-hour nerd station. Now give us money. So instead, what we're going to do is we're going to make a couple of samples. That's really the only word I can kind of come up with as far as to describe what we're going to be doing. These samples are going to happen in the summertime. So it's going to be kind of in between seasons of Nerd to the Third. Um, and it's going to be in June. And all June long, every Saturday, we're going to put out an eight-hour 
podcast. I mean, that's the only way to really, it's an eight hour podcast. And so the hopes there is that you start the podcast at the beginning of your day, you listen to it throughout the day, like a normal radio station. And it gives you a really good idea of not just maybe what type of music we're hoping to have on there, but the different DJs, quote unquote, we're going to have on and the different topics that we're going to talk about. And it's going to give you a really good breadth of content as to what this is going to be. So hopefully from there, the next step would be Patreon and getting the funds necessary to fund this basically. And so that's what we want to do. We, it's basically a very, very long eight hour advertisement for this is what we hope to do with this concept and the project and hopefully how we can move it forward. And once again, it's going to be 100% community driven. So if you, if there's music on there, you don't like, let us know if there's things that you do like, let us know. And we'll try to do more of that. Um, and I mean, for now, that's all we're really going to reveal because obviously we have a very long road to June. And so there's probably going to be a lot of things that will hopefully change that will hopefully be better, but we definitely want you guys, we want your input and we want to know what you think we should do or, Ah, we want. I don't know what. What else? God damn it. Um, just expressing how much we want the input of like you know, and throw in the su suggestions of if you guys have any content creators you would like us to work with, or if yeah, you yeah. have anything that you want us to to look at, you know, let us know. Or if you have any content creators that you would like for us to look at, maybe they that you would like on the show or like to have a part of the project, if you think that they would be a perfect match, let us know. We want this to be our project, the community project. And so hopefully we can make it worth your while. But that'll be in June. And so as time goes on, we'll keep giving you guys updates as far as how's the schedule going, how's everything going, and what what hopefully every step along the way. And so hopefully you'll give us your feedback and let us know. Um, other than that, that was the show today. So thank you guys so much for joining us for this version of or this version. What the fuck, man? <laughs> Thank you for joining us for this episode of Nerds of the Third. Make sure you can go to TX3 Productions on Twitter or Threat X3 Productions on Facebook and YouTube, where you can see the video. Video. I said, God, why am I? It's the end. I can't talk, people. You can see the video version. It has extra stuff. It has in between stuff and uh, just a lot of fun beforehand so you can check that out on youtube you can add at gmail.com and that is our email threat x3 productions at, at gmail.com and that is stroke our, a little bit um and so let us know what you thought of the episode what do you thought about what do you think about our project everything you can let us know there thank you so much nate you're welcome <laughs> and thank you coach remind them where they can find you as well you can follow me on twitter at coach smitty 24 you can also uh if you ever want to contact me for anything you can also email me at moviefixpod at gmail.com all right so then yeah make sure to look out for that movie fix coming up very soon all right this was nerd to the third where you can always talk nerdy to me Sweet, sweet, sweet victory. Super oh, Bowl today. Yeah, Bar Maroon 5 is going to do the fun Yes, thing. I'm so ah. excited. So excited. That was good. All right, good episode. That was really good.